All right, welcome to Scratch Programming. We're going to build a Frogger video game. In case you've never played Frogger before, the old advertisement looks something like this. And you've got to get the frog across a multi-lane highway. So in order to do this, uh, we are going to uh, start with Scratch. I've got the offline editor open again, just because I think it's a little bit faster. And I've started File New. So I've got Untitled up here. And I'm actually just going to delete the cat right now and start completely fresh. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually get my frog to work. And once we've got that going, then, then that should be helpful. So I'm going to choose a sprite from the library. I'm going to choose an animal. Now, if you would like to choose a different animal, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to choose a frog because it's sort of inherent in the name of the game. But uh, if you would like to choose something different, you go right ahead. Uh, they've changed the frogs around different lately, so here's the frog choice that we now have. And so here's my frog. If I want to edit that frog, I'm going to just quickly take off the tongue. Um, you'll see here, these are the vector graphic options over here. And I can just click on that. It's all actually grouped together as a part of a picture, so I'm going to choose the ungroup choice and then when I click on the tongue and press delete, now it just looks like a frog. Okay, now there's lots of different ways to do it. If you'd like to draw your own frog or whatever, you feel free. And again, it's already given me the name frog. Uh, if you want to change the name of it, you can do that right here. And we'll make some more changes to that later. But for right now, we've got a frog and now we want to get it to move. Now there are two completely different ways to do this. Uh, if you're used to using event controls, then you might notice that there's a um, receive message or space keys or anything like that. What I've found is when if you use the when the space key is pressed, it, it has a delay built into it that students find really frustrating. So we're going to choose the when the green flag is clicked and we're going to find a different way to sense whether the key is being pressed or not. And uh, so when the green flag is clicked, it will be our starting block. And then we need a forever from the control tab. So go to control get a forever and now what we're going to do is we're going to have some ifs so I'm just going to start with an if kind of separated for now I'm going to put it inside the forever when I'm when I'm done but I want to see I want to show you how this is built and so we've got an if and then something has to be checked the condition and then there's a then and then it will do whatever's in the mouth of of the if so what we want it to do in this case is we want it to sense if we're using the keyboard up arrow. So under the baby blue sensing area, we can go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it, uh, it says if the key space is pressed, and you can see the black triangle there gives you an indication there's a whole lot more choices underneath. So I'm just going to go with the up arrow first. And then as I put this, I can put this back in. Now I could change that again later, but we'll just leave it really good. So if the key up arrow is pressed, then I want the frog to move up. So the easiest thing for me to do with that would be under the motion palette. I can go down one, two. Now I could use move, but the problem is then I need to make sure I know what direction I'm facing and all kinds of other complications. So what I've found that makes the most sense to students is if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, there's change X. And if I go down two more, then there's change Y. So in this situation, what it's going to do is it's going to take either the X value, which is here, or the Y value, which is here, uh, or you could look at them up here as well. Right now, the X value is negative 30, and the Y value is negative 13. And if I move it over here, you can see that those values change. Now the X value is 73, and the Y value is 37. And uh, we can explain that later, or you can get a math teacher to explain it to you. But right now, if I'm going up, uh, key up arrow pressed. If I'm going up, then am I changing X or am I changing Y? So hopefully you've caught on that you're changing Y. And so into the mouth of this if, I'm going to put change Y by, now it says 10, I'm going to slow it down to about 3. And then I'm going to put this into my forever. Now if you start pressing the other arrow buttons, obviously we haven't built the code for that yet. So the only key that will work is the up arrow. So I'm just going to drag this guy down 
click the green flag, you can see this block of code is now highlighted, which means it's running. And if I press the up arrow key, which I'm doing right now, you can see it moves up. Now, if I press down, nothing happens because I have no code for that. If I press left and right, nothing happens. Only the up key is working. So I'm going to take a pause right now. I'm going to challenge you to see if you can figure out ways to add more of these ifs so that you can get the down and the right and the left working. It's a good mathematical challenge for you. If you've done the warm up exercises, you may have a few hints already built in and we'll come back with the next video to see how you did.